In today's video, we are drawing the king of the monsters. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and in today's video, we are drawing Godzilla, the king of all monsters. The latest Godzilla film is in cinemas right now. It's Godzilla vs. King Kong, so I thought it'd be a really cool opportunity to draw an iconic Japanese character in sort of a neo-traditional Japanese, uh, maybe a bit new school sort of design. Now, before we get into today's drawing, I want you guys to leave a comment down below letting me know which one your favorite is, Godzilla or King Kong. And if you guys would like to see me do my own rendition of King Kong as well, we could do like a cool traditional style gorilla head. Anyways, that having been said, let's get straight into today's video by going to the overhead. All right, guys, welcome back to the table. So to start this one off, you're going to need an A4 piece of sketch paper. This is A3 sketch paper folded in half. And you guys already know why I do that. It just gives you a little bit more uh, cushion when you're drawing. I've also got a mechanical pencil as usual for sketching an eraser in case we make any mistakes and we need it. And uh, you'll also need the lid of a saucepan. No, I'm just kidding. You'll just need a lid or something large and round to draw a circle with. All right, so to start this one off, we're going to take the saucepan and we're going to draw a nice big circle. Uh, you're going to try and get close to the center of your page, but you can line this up a little bit better when you're transferring it to watercolor paper. So I just trace around the lid like that. That should do. Okay, so the first thing we want to do for this one is draw in some of the construction lines. So I want to start with almost like a box, but it's going to be in a regular shape. So we're going to bring up uh, this sort of box shape here. In fact, I want to bring that back a little bit. Okay. Come across the front and you're actually creating like a three dimensional uh, box. So we're going to add a front side to it as well. If you've ever drawn like a cube, it's pretty much the same as drawing like a, uh, one of those uh, three dimensional uh, objects. It's going to widen a little bit at the back here and then connect up. Okay, and you can round the top off a little bit. And you actually want to round off all of your corners. So anytime that the lines meet, I'm just going to round those off and give us a little bit more of a bubble, bubble shaped box. You know, it's got the corners that are sort of rounded off like that. Okay, once you've done this, I'm going to divide this up. So just drawing in a line running across the center and down the front like that. And then we're going to draw a line that's not directly in the center of our top uh, sort of shape there. We're going to cut it down to about a third and come across the top of the box and then straight down for the side. And this will give us like the side plane of our head here to which you can add a circle or an oval, which is roughly where the eyeball will sit for this one. Now, just in front of this for the snout area, you're going to want to draw another box and you want to keep this one uh, in line with uh, with the shape so it runs on the same plane and you want it to come up to about halfway. So we're going to draw a line across the front here about halfway up and then we're going to come out on the same angle as this top line here like this and we're just going to create another box. Okay. All right, now once you've done this, I like to draw in the jaw and the cheek sort of area. So just a nice big oval. It's gonna come up and touch the bottom of your eye shape there. And it's gonna come right back to the back of the box nearly. Like that. And it's gonna come forward to about the front of our muzzle area there. From the end of your snout area here, this sort of second box that you drew, you're gonna come back into your oval with a little S curve like that. And then you're gonna basically drop down and forward with a similar curve, okay? Like this. Once you reach the end of that curve, you're just gonna curve back upwards into your little box shape there. From here, we're just gonna double up on that bottom section to join it up. So just coming out and down at the bottom. And you're gonna do another S curve portion here where it curves in and back out. And then you're gonna follow your oval shape around the back for your sort of jawline area there. For the back of the neck sort of area, we're basically gonna drop a line from the very, very top of this box backwards like this. When we get to about here, I'm just gonna flick it out slightly uh, to give us like that neck and then into the top of the shoulder there. From here, we're just gonna drop 
uh, just below the uh, sort of chin area here, the bottom jaw, we can drop down a line like this and then drop it out again for that shouldered sort of look that, to match this side here, basically. And you want to draw a bit of a center line. So imagine it coming from the underside middle of the jaw here, wrapping under and then coming around like this. And that's going to help later on with some of the sort of chest plating we're going to do. So coming in to do the eye first, you're basically going to add in a big eyebrow ridge. So I just add in this big jelly bean shape like this above the eye. And then behind that, you're going to layer in a couple more. So one there, and I want to do a nice big one at the end like this, okay? Now this is going to sit basically on that line. So this curves from the side of the head where it goes over the top of our eye, it overlaps our eye, and it starts joining into the top of the head there. Just in front of this, you can add another little bit that comes out and up and behind. Now to start adding a bit of detail to this area, I'm gonna drop a line from behind the eye down and forward. And we're gonna curve that around the front. So this creates like an eyebrow ridge. And then you wanna add a little bit of uh, un uneven texture to this just by adding little peaks and I guess we'll call them spikes, but you're just gonna add a little bit of a rough texture to this. Godzilla's obviously got that sort of scaly lizard skin and really rough sort of textures on his skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in here. For the next one, you're gonna do the same thing. Just coming out, adding a few little spikes and whatnot. And you're gonna have it sort of peak at the back there. So we've got that little peak area there. And it can sort of curve back down. Now I'm gonna do a little line that just goes up towards that peak and we'll shade off that line later on and it'll make it look quite dynamic. Coming behind it here, we'll do the same sort of thing. Just adding in some textures, adding in our little peak and bringing it forward. Now for the actual eye itself, we're just gonna trace the little circle that we did and I'm gonna do an inner ring. So just tracing that line, doubling up on that line. And then on the inside of that, I'm gonna do a pupil. So just one more line on the very inside. So we've basically got three little circles in there. From here, we're gonna start working on the nose and the top part of the jaw there, the snout. So just coming up to the side plane of this front box here, this little area here, you're gonna draw in your nostril. It's gonna wrap from the front. So just start your line on the front of that box. It's going to wrap around to the side and then loop back on itself, right? So the nostril actually comes around to the side of our box there. And then you can just add in a little curve that goes around that and sort of tapers off towards the front. And that's going to be like your visible side nostril. From the other side, you're going to come in from the outside of the box here, the corner of the box. And you're going to bring a line down and in. It's just like a little W curve. And then from the outside of that, you're going to do that line again so a w curve that comes out and in like that okay now coming to the front of the mouth here you're going to start around the center point and draw a line that curves down it's an s curve to the corner like this and then it's an s curve out of the corner and back underneath the nostril there you can now link this side up by just going underneath your s curve and joining those lines from here what i'm going to do is just bring a line down you can put a little W curve into it and then whip it up slightly like this. And then for the last line, you're basically going to come down with a long S curve towards the back of your mouth there like that. Now to do the portion that comes into the top of the cheek here, you're basically going to start just behind the eye. Drop in a little M shaped curve like that. Bring it forward overlapping the eye slightly like this. And then to come onto the front of the nose, we just add another little curve, curve shape to the top of that, that comes down into the top of the nose. And you wanna sort of have that last bit taper off nice and smooth. At the very back of this, I wanna add in some more of that texture and we'll add in these little spikes that are gonna be kind of rep reminiscent of uh, how we do dragon whiskers, you know, when we do the spikes on the dragon or we did this on the Oni in last week's video. So you're gonna add these little spikes. You don't wanna make them too big in this sense because we're just adding it as a form of texture to give the face texture there, which is that sort of scaly texture, okay? 
Okay, from here you can start adding in some teeth. So I'm going to come to this flat front portion of the mouth here. And I think I want to drop in a large tooth around here. And then I'll do two smaller teeth towards the center of that portion of the mouth. And then another large tooth at the end, which will overlap slightly with this uh, small tooth because it sits behind it slightly. Coming back towards the back of the mouth here, I'll throw in some more teeth and a little bit of gum. So just coming in with these curved peaks and throwing in as few or as many teeth as you'd like. I like to change the size up of the teeth regardless whether I'm doing a Godzilla drawing or you know, or say any other sort of design. I think it's cool to sort of randomize the size of each teeth. And I'm going to put in a large tooth at the back, which again is like almost reminiscent of how we would do big dragon teeth or maybe a Hanya mask with that big teeth sticking out the back, big tooth sticking out the back of the mouth. And again, not necessarily something Godzilla has, but this is like a tattoo design, um, you know, stylized variation of that. Okay, to complete this little section, we're gonna go ahead and add a couple of lines, one that comes from roughly where this tooth starts, and you're just gonna shoot a straight line out like that. And then maybe from where this tooth is, we'll do the same, just coming straight, forward like this and you want to have a wide taper on this so they're both going to start in the mouth and they're going to taper out slightly like that okay so it's time to start adding in uh, a bottom jaw the section for the bottom jaw area we're going to start by leaving this out we'll do this area and we'll come back to this so i'm going to go ahead and add in a line for our lip so just adding in a bit of a curvy line that wavers a little bit coming up towards the back there and then you can start to throw in a few teeth just by adding the little curved peaks. And I like to make sure there's a little bit of uh, gum visible as well where I can. This is going to allow us to pack a little bit more color in there and get some reds in there, which will be really nice. Okay, so once I've done that, you can sort of double up on that line a little bit if you'd like, just coming down and adding a little bit of a lip to him. And then coming from the bottom here, you're pretty much just going to trace your line around but add a little bit of that rough sort of scaly texture to it the way we did on top of the head there. And as you sort of reach the back, I'll turn my page a little bit, you're going to go ahead and add some more of those little sort of spiky dudes at the back here, which again is more common sort of with dragon designs and things like that. But you know, Godzilla is sort of like a big dragon character, so I think that's going to look really cool. All right, now coming in to do this section, the reason we drew these two lines is uh, Godzilla spits out that blue flames or the atomic flames as they call it, which is pretty damn cool. And we're gonna make a cool little special effect uh, when we color this one in. So we're gonna go ahead and outline um, the inside of the mouth, but we're gonna leave little bits of it out. So I want you to double up on this bottom line to start with just very gently so that we have a little gap in there and you're not gonna draw anything inside that gap. After that gap, you can put in your teeth. So we'll drop in one, two, three little peaks like that. Maybe we'll do a fourth one just behind that. And then from the other side of the mouth, you can just join it up. I like to add that little shadow tooth in there. And then we just join the jaw up by coming around with a bit of a, a wavy line. But again, you're gonna leave just that little, littlest white gap there. When we come to outlining this area, the inside of the mouth, I'm gonna do this bottom jaw in a, either a thinner liner than everything else, or I'll do it in gray. All right, once you've drawn in the bottom section of your mouth there, we can complete the rest of the head. So I'm gonna start by going up to our center line. So this is the line we drew across the top of the head here. And I'm gonna draw in a small shark's fin shape at the very front. A larger one just behind this and then an even larger one behind that that's going to split off into two little shark fins and they're going to drop down behind our head there and then you can go ahead and add a bit of detail to those just by adding a little bit of uh, you know this texture we've been adding you can add a little bit of the texture to these little sharks fin shapes okay once you've done this we can join up this side of the head so we're going to come in from where we did our nose here we're going to dip in slightly and then as we come back out you want to remember we're seeing this curve on the other side so you're going to want to bring that out like this 
and then back in. And then we're just gonna have a bit of a rough texture on top of the head, a few little spikes in that coming back that will sort of mimic this side of our uh, eyebrow ridge there. We're gonna come to the back of the head and neck here and we're gonna start putting in those real big spikes that Godzilla's sort of known for. So they're be pretty much just the same uh, big shark fin style spikes that we put on the head. We're just doing them much bigger and you can just rough them in as curved peaks. So think of it as though you're just drawing big teeth or shark's fins or something like that. There's not really a specific way to draw them and they can be quite rough. You know, you don't have to have them perfect. And then you wanna add texture to their outer lines just by adding that sort of jaggedness to them, that unevenness. Now to complete this portion at the back of the neck, we're gonna do some scales. So we're gonna come down from about here and drop in a long scale like that. And then we'll split that off into two. So one goes that way and one's gonna drop back this way. And then we split that. We go between those with one scale like this. And again, split that off into two, back to one. Same way you would do scales for a dragon or a koi fish or something. The only difference is we're not measuring these scales out. They don't have to be perfect for this. All right, once you've completed that sort of scale section, we're gonna do the, uh, the neck area that leads down into like our chest plating or our belly scales, which Godzilla doesn't actually have. But again, this is like a tattoo version interpretation of this. So I'm gonna do some like belly scales similar to the way we'd do it on a dragon. So just coming in from under the head, you're gonna put in like a W curve or a V shaped curve that just flicks off at the end. And it's gonna come to that center line uh, that we drew there, okay? Coming in with another one, basically just a curve, and then bouncing off that center line to a second curve like this. And then you're gonna repeat that process, pretty much just coming down the length of our neck area here. Once you get to the bottom of that little area, you can just curve a line down and curve down again with like an M curve and that'll just give you that little shoulder area, which you can add scales to. In this case, I think I'm just gonna leave it as the sort of skin there and you can add a little bit of a rough texture to this if you would like as well. All right, so from here, the sketch is finished. We're actually leaving the background and we're gonna do like a nice red sun effect in the background for that sort of Japanese look. You could of course throw some buildings in the background or Mount Fuji or you know, however you want this to look. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that and we're gonna do it solid red. So we're gonna transfer this to some watercolor paper. That big outer circle, I'm gonna do with a red fine point marker. And for the rest of it, I'm just gonna do with a 1.2 and a 0.5 size uh, lining nib. And I'll see you guys basically in the next part. I'm gonna transfer it to watercolor paper so we can get started on the painting. I've outlined our design. I've transferred it over to some watercolor paper and it's looking really cool. So I'm keen to start painting this one. I just wanna mention a couple of things. Number one, the sketch and like five of the layers of how we built this up are all available in the class notes folder. So if you're a member, they're, they're in the class notes folder for this week's video. If you're not a member yet, there is a link uh, in the description to sign up. If you would like to sign up and support the channel, it's greatly appreciated. All right, so to paint this one, we are using Liquitex acrylic inks. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, they are acrylic inks that can be applied like watercolors, but they dry and uh, they don't reactivate. So you can work layer over layer to create your artwork. If you're interested in trying them, there's a link in the description down below where you can purchase them and that is an affiliate link. So it does help support the channel a little bit. I've also got a couple of brushes. I've got an inking brush and a blending brush. They're both uh, Taclon synthetic brushes and I've got a number five and a number six. Along with this, I have a glass of water for blending and washing out my brushes. Now I've preloaded my palette here. So I've got carbon black, I've got phthalo blue, this is phthalo green with a couple of drops of transparent raw ember, and that turns my phthalo green from a really bright green to more of a dull uh, greeny gray sort of color, like a muddy green. I've got a pyro red, which we're using for the background. So I've loaded up my palette quite a bit. And then I've got yellow orange azo, or as I like to call it, golden yellow. Okay, so to start this one off, we are doing black shading as always. It's always my preferred way to start a painting is with the black shading. This way you can get all of your values correct. So coming in with our Liquitex Carbon Black, I'm gonna start by doing the scales at the back here. 
and they're going to be done pretty much solid black. However, you're going to leave a little gap of white paper around the edge of each scale. So this is pretty common with a lot of Japanese designs. It's very common with traditional style designs as well. And yes, it takes patience and it takes a lot longer than if you were to just color straight over the top of the scales. But in my opinion, it looks a lot nicer and it gives it that traditional sort of feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint in each and every scale on our next section here, making sure to leave that little white gap around the border of each scale. And we'll come back at the next part. All right, once you've done those areas on the back of the head and the neck there, as you can see, it's already starting to look really nice. We're gonna go ahead and do some more black shading on this guy. So generally when I do this sort of stuff, I just try to make sure that there's a nice level of black. However, being that this character, Godzilla, is mostly like a dark gray originally, uh, in some of the later movies, I know he was more of a green color. So I try and even it out a little bit and do nice and dark sort of black areas. And in the most lightest areas, we'll do a little bit of our green. So I think we're gonna come in just underneath this back tooth here, underneath our little lip area. And let's come in here with a little bit of our black and then take your blending brush, uh, get a bit of water on there and you just want to feather that edge out and blend it down towards the bottom of the jaw there. And this is pretty much how we're going to do our black shading throughout is you're pretty much just moistening the uh, blending brush and feathering out that edge so that you can blend it down uh, from black to gray and through to your paper, which is white. We're gonna do a little bit of black at the front of our jaw here. Now just remember that we've got that little uh, atomic beam that he shoots. And so that's gonna be shaded a little bit differently. So don't try not to go past that line at all, but just bring a little bit of that black uh, back on the jaw there. We're gonna flip this guy around. It's a little bit easier to work for, uh, from different angles here. And we're going to come into this section just behind the nose. So just coming in with a bit of black, making sure to leave a little white uh, sort of space where the lip is there. And then you're going to feather that out and blend it back up onto the cheek there and just behind our nose. Like that. Then you can take a little bit more black and do the section just behind it in the exact same way, sort of mimicking the line just below it to get your black in the right place. And then blending that up to a nice gray up into the back of the jaw and the cheek there. All right, while we're in this position, I'll take a bit of black in just behind the eye. And I wanna get this area pretty dark. It's like in behind the cheek here. So a fair bit of black in there. With a blending brush, feather that out and just pull it back behind your eye and behind the back jaw area there. Now coming from the front of the eye, you're gonna do the same thing. So just rotate to a better angle and add our black in front of our eye. Bit of water on our brush to feather that edge and then drag it out to the front of our face there using the gray. Okay, coming down to the front of our mouth area here, we're gonna do some black across the front lip, but you're going to leave that little white gap that we put there. And you're gonna blend that backwards towards the nostril and just towards the face in general. So just blending that back, working with your ink, letting the water do the work for you. And then I want to come in with a little bit of black just underneath this ridge that we created here. So just coming in with a little bit of black under that ridge, blending that out and forward. Okay, so we're going to come in from behind the back of the head here now. And I'm actually going to do a fair bit of black at the back here, uh, just working around our little horns. And we're going to leave a little white strip across the top there. That's going to be our forced highlight across the top. So just working in a bit of your black ink. And then feathering it out and blending it forward. 
from the other side at the back of the head you're going to come up from that scale as you can see i already had a little bit of black shading on there but we want to bring that forward a little bit more so just coming up from where we did the last black scale there and then blending it forward do a little bit of black on the eyebrow ridges here so just coming in from the bottom of this one again you're leaving that little white strip at the very bottom there and just coming in with your black feathering that out and then blending it backwards into the rest of the head there and then what you're going to do from there is these little lines that we drew in the other eyebrow sections you're going to do a little bit of black on that line and then blend it up off the line and a little bit of black toward the bottom of your I guess scale there and blend that up towards the little line that we drew there in the center making sure you reach white before we hit that line for the chest plating you're pretty much going to do a little bit of black off one side like this leaving that little white gap as usual and then blending it towards the center making sure to hit white before we get to the center and then doing a little bit of black off our center area like so and blending it back towards the neck again just making sure we leave that little white gap at the bottom of this section okay now in terms of doing our black shading that's it for the black shading we're going to start doing some color now uh, as you can see this design looks really cool in black and gray as well the color is not completely necessary you could end it here just finish off the background but we are going to do a little bit of color in this one as well so i'm going to start us off with the smallest areas of color we're going to go into our orange yellow azo or yellow orange azo and we're going to use that first off just to do the little ring around the eye here so just doing that in solid yellow and then if you want to you can pick a couple of the teeth and do them in yellow as well i think i want to do the big back tooth in yellow and maybe these two big front teeth as well will look good in yellow the rest of them i will leave white you could go ahead and do all of them yellow if you wanted to all right i've just washed my brush out and we are now going into some of our blue so we've got uh, phthalo blue and we're going to do a fair bit of blending with this one we don't want it to be too dark and it tends to be a quite a dark color so i'm going to flip this guy around and we're going to start by doing a little bit of our phthalo blue at the base of each of these spikes once you've done that just take your blending brush and blend that up towards the top uh, you want to try and reach a really light blue if not white towards the top there okay and uh yeah godzilla's got these really cool like fluorescent blue uh spines on his uh, head and going down his back so i just try to get that feel uh with the lighting and that can be a little bit difficult with the dark blue like this but if you blend it up with water it becomes transparent and shows some of that white paper through it and i think looks really nice all right now i'm not sure how much of uh the footage i lost my camera did cut out uh, i did the little um atomic beam the atomic flame out of his mouth so it's just a little bit of that same blue that we used for the horns from either side phthalo blue and blended and all the way to white in the very center this makes it look really luminous and it also with this very thin outline of his bottom jaw makes it look super bright like you can sort of just see his jaw through this beam of light so i've just washed my brush out we're now going into our green the south phthalo green mixed with uh transparent raw ember and i don't want to use too much of this i kind of want to keep it nice and subtle so i'm going to start on our little chest plates here and we're going to go over the top of our blacks and grays with a bit of this green and then i want to just blend it across i really don't want this to be too harsh you're basically going to blend straight off your gray shading there so going into our gray and then blending that color through and forward and this should give you a fairly subtle look so that the green doesn't overpower everything i don't want this to be like a big green dragon i kind of want the green to be nice and subtle 
Now this part here is completely optional as well. I'm just going through and adding a little bit of that green through my face, just any large open areas of skin. Uh, we wanna have that little green sort of reptile skin look. Like I said, it's not completely necessary. I think it'll look nice. It's just a little subtle uh, bit of extra color in there. This as well, any areas of black, you can add a bit of green over the top of them. All right, once you've done all of your sections of green and you are happy with it, you can wash your brush out again and go into your Pyrol Red. Now, this is the last sort of touches. We're doing Pyrol Red quite a bit through this one. So we're going to go in and do all of our gums Pyrol Red. So just going in between your teeth and painting in all those little sections of gum with our red here. And this will really help bring a little bit more life to the image. It's quite a dull color, which is just the blacks and the greens and the blue, which is another cold color. So this will just help bring a little bit more vibrancy to it by using your reds. On the inside of the mouth where the tongue would be, we've got a solid black blended forward. You're gonna go over the top of your blacks with your red, over the top of your greys, and just bring that red right forward to the front of your mouth. There's a little bit of red in the little corner behind the eye there, just like that. And then I wanna do a really little amount of red at the back of the eye. Now you gotta be careful, I wanna leave a little white gap. And then I wanna take my blending brush and just draw that red from the back of the eye round to the front of the eye a little bit. And that's gonna make the eye look a little bit red. Okay, very last thing to do on this one, apart from sign it, is to go ahead and fill your entire background in red. Yep, that's right, your entire background solid red. This is uh, done with a lot of traditional tattoos, American traditional style, they do like a big solid red sun in the background. Uh, not so much with Japanese style tattoos, However, the, if you look at the Japanese flag, they've got the big red sun in the background. So I thought it'd be really cool to do an iconic Japanese character with a big solid red sun in the background. And it should look really dynamic and bright and that will juxtapose really nicely with our dark subject matter. So you're gonna go ahead and fill in that entire circle solid red. All right guys, and that's basically it for this one. If you're having trouble getting your red at the back really solid, it's gonna take a couple of layers. So the first layer I go through and just make sure all of the edges line up, make sure that I'm inside the circle. And then the second and third layer, you just go through with a big brush, big fat brush, and try and get it as solid as possible. That's basically it for this one, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this design. Make sure you leave a comment down below letting me know if you like Godzilla or King Kong. And if you'd like to see me do a version of King Kong just like this in this sort of tattoo style. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep up the drawing and painting. Bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.